to the Narquise community. This is Yoni. I'm communicating from my uh, office in the Motef, the basement of my home. I'm in quarantine. This is the second time since uh, early March of this year due to COVID and um, related issues, travel and so forth. I'm here to do the Parashah, the weekly Torah portion, and this week we are at uh, the beginning of Deuteronomy. Well, we'll start in chapter 3. It's called Et Hanan, and it has to do with Moses pleading before God. And I'll give just a, a bit of an overview of the principal things here. We're starting in Deuteronomy chapter 3 from verse 23, and we uh, will finish in Deuteronomy 7. Um, it begins with Moses viewing Knan from the heights of what we call Moab, modern-day Jordan, and it's from a place called Pisgah, which many of you locals would know, is an area, it's kind of a higher portion, a plateau, maybe a bit of a peak on the eastern side of the Dead Sea and up. So if you're down in Bokek, uh, some of the spa hotel district, or Mount Dome, or down near where the Dead Sea mining is going on, you can look across to the east and see a higher part of the hills of Moab. And uh, that might be ancient Pisgah, which means high place, or high point. Uh, Deuteronomy 4, starting in verse 1, Moses commands obedience, and there's a, a long discourse there. Moses uh, continues with his teaching in chapter 4, describing cities of refuge that would be on the east side of the Jordan Valley. So, and in Gilead, Golan, and some of that region, cities of refuge. Also in Deuteronomy chapter 4, we have um, a transition into his second address, and that's going to include chapter 5, which is a repeat of the Ten Commandments. Later, Moses uh, will, he's understood as the mediator for all of God's will, and that's from Deuteronomy 5, 22 and onwards. Then we have the great commandment, the Shema, Deuteronomy 6 from verse 1. Deuteronomy 6 verse 10, we have a caution against disobedience. And Deuteronomy from chapter 7 verse 1, uh, we have the discussion about being a chosen people. Moses, who is on the east side, somewhere around Pisgah, that whole ridge of Moab leading up to the top of the Dead Sea, um, even Mount Nebo is part of that same ridge. Moses gets lots of little purviews. And he can look over from Pisgah over to the Judean wilderness and beyond. And if it's the green time of the year, then it would be very attractive. But if it's in the drier seasons, both sides uh, kind of have about the same look. Never mind. So he's looking across and he talks about how great God has been. That, you know, you've really been strong. You've delivered us. Nobody has a God like you. And then he puts out his request. Please, if possible, let me go over and touch that beautiful side, that Jordan side. And the Lord basically says no. As much as you want to uh, call out the meanings of this word, v'etchanan, chen, mercy, grace, as much as Moses cries out and he can see it, he can almost reach out and touch it. As a matter of fact, um, he could take his cursor, his mouse, and click Amazon.com and maybe they could bring him a bit of the promised land. But the Lord says no. Basically, to be content with what you have. Some people view prayer as some sort of magical loophole that you can perhaps 
change the will of God with your prayer. Uh, but the point of this parasha is the opposite. Um, God doesn't change his mind in this situation. Moses is changed. The mind of Moses, the, the attitude of Moses. And I think this is the take home of the, the whole parasha. To be content with what we have, uh, we may be able to see more, we may really desire more, but just live in a state of contentment. We have been through a very difficult week. Um, if you are keeping up with the holidays, the Jewish calendar, the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av, was a couple of days ago, the 29th and 30th of this month, July. And on the 9th of Av, a number of things are remembered. Some are perhaps based on some legend and tradition, but others seem to be more factual. Uh, the list is quite long. I'll just deal with a few here, but the story of the 12 spies coming back, 10 with a bad report, according to tradition, that happens on the 9th of Av. The destruction of the first temple, 586 BC, um, the 9th of Av. The destruction of the second temple by the Romans, also accordingly happens on the 9th of Av. Uh, the expulsion of the Jewish people from England uh, may have happened on the 9th of Av or the 10th of Av. The expulsion from Spain, 1492, 7th, 8th of Av, but it's very, very close. Uh, the beginning of World War I. Um, there's also the Bar Kokhba revolt, which I failed to mention. Sounds like it ends on the 9th of Av, and it was very disastrous. So as I said, it's been a, a difficult week with the 9th of Av, fasting and remembering terrible things that have happened. At the same time, the Padasha for this week is really a message of encouragement, in a sense, to be content with what we have, the good things that, that God gives us, not to want more. Of course we want more. Uh, I'm in quarantine. I want to be out of quarantine. This is my second time in quarantine. I've had enough of quarantine. Isolation is no good for me. Yet, I am learning how to be content with what I have, with the tools that I have, with what God has given me. I surely pray for more sometimes, but I think um, at this point in my life, being content is a bit easier. Things are more internalized. Scripture is a bit more internalized. Um, contentment really is uh, a good way of life, and I think that is the focus uh, of this parasha. The book of Deuteronomy uh, on a whole is quite a bit about um, living and not just hearing God's word, but, but doing it, living it, and that's uh, a great a great way to uh, propel us forward from here. So there's uh, a few subtle differences between um, the presentation of the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus as opposed to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, differences in language, they're fairly subtle, but a lot of people notice, countless scholars and laymen alike. Um, I'll just give you one or two here. In Exodus we have the term Zechor et Yom HaShabbat, and in Deuteronomy, uh, that ha happens to be remember the Sabbath day, but in Deuteronomy, Shmor et Yom HaShabbat, which would be more like preserve, protect, or observe. So in Exodus we have the word remember, and in Deuteronomy it's the word observe. Kind of saying the same thing on the one hand, but on the other hand, more than just remember it, also do it. Then we come to another uh, famous line in Exodus, you will not covet, lo tachmod. In Deuteronomy 5.17, it starts out the same way as Exodus, you will not covet, covet, but then it continues, you will not desire, velotita ve beit reicha. So don't desire. You will not desire uh, your neighbor's things. So, Exodus, you will not covet. Deuteronomy, you will not desire it. And that could be huge. The difference could be um, quite, quite uh, significant. The Exodus version only warns not to covet. 
something that belongs to someone else. On the other hand, the Deuteronomy version seems to have a new twist, you will not desire. The difference is significant. You will not covet tells us not to act towards obtaining the object that we might be looking at. You shall not desire, on the other hand, means that we may not even, uh, we shouldn't even actively think about it. We shouldn't wish for it. And that's a big difference. Now, in our society, our culture, everything that we see, everything that we wish for, um, can literally be at our fingertips. We can make a click on Amazon and get just about anything we want. So if we see our neighbor, he's got some new thing, and it's, it's very uh, remarkable. It, it does something, you know, a new lawnmower or something. We look over and we see that. And we'll, well, how do we get that? How do we get... Oh, well, you just go here and you click at Amazon and, and they bring it right to your front doorstep. Um, you can get anything you want. We're a whole culture based on getting what we see that everyone else has. Everyone else has something that, that we want. It's, we're geared um, with this system. It's, it's deeply internalized. I, I know people who've um, bought, well, I know you can buy cars, you can buy a house, but I actually know people who have ordered a wife online. Don't covet your neighbor's wife, but you can order one online. Uh, no. But she could be here the next day if you're a member of Amazon Prime. Like Moses prayed, begged even, that God would let him get over to the other side. And, and experience that, some people might even go beyond wishing for things that they see that the neighbors have, but maybe even praying for it. Um, Loti Tave, don't even desire um, Halavai, if I could just go to the other side. So to finish off uh, with today's parasha, the differences between, say, the Exodus Ten Commandments and how they are presented in Deuteronomy is very similar to the way um, my friend Dr. Dan Block, Daniel Block from Wheaton, uh, in his book, The Gospel According to Moses, uh, he sums up the way Deuteronomy, the way Moses uh, presents certain things in, in the book that he wants to set up places that the Torah can be read, that people can hear it, they can learn it, and then he also attaches this. So reading, hearing, learning, fearing, obeying, and living. Living it. Uh, internalizing it. Not, be, not to be um, desiring all sorts of things that we can't have, perhaps, at this moment. I can't have freedom from quarantine. I can pray for it, but that may not change God's mind about the situation. Living it, not just hearing it, uh, doing it, acting it out, uh, releases us from all kinds of uh, pressures. We no longer have to worry that we may not have something that the neighbors have. We, we don't really have to worry about coveting. That, um, it's, it's a, a level of contentment that, that can hardly be described unless you've experienced it. And a life of contentment in God is, is the desirable uh, focus, the desirable goal uh, to, to not be so needy all the time, but to be completely dependent on God to the point where we have no worries. So the moral to the story, be content with what you have and love the one you love the one you